In an earlier video, you saw me make this fish. In this video, we're gonna make this beautiful stand. This did not start out to be like this. I was just gonna, I thought, I don't wanna make a, I don't just wanna make a base for it. It's a little sculpture. I wanna do something more fun. So I said, I'm gonna make something that goes around and around. <laughs> so I, I wound up with this. It's, it's got a little bit of a herky-jerky wiggle to it. Anyway, in this week's video, we're gonna make this base. All right, starting with a piece of scrap, let's lay out a three inch circle on the old wood, because that's gonna be the base of our boy. All right, good. You can see that the radius of the circle that I'm cutting is too small for this quarter inch blade. So I'm here, I'm just using kind of a uh, hack attack where I'm just kind of carving my way around it. Alternatively, you can do it this way, you just simply cut down into the line, and then automatically when you get to each cut, the relief uh, falls away, and you just don't have to bother with the old uh, hunt and peck method. Got this little circle cut out on the bandsaw, and I put in a 3 16 pin. We'll go into that hole right there on this piece of scrap wood. Clamp that into place, and this thing now turns. Let's go. This is gonna be the upright that forms the center support of the whole stand. And I found the center of it. And now I'm gonna go drill a hole in it. Okay, I drilled the hole and I tapped in an aluminum sleeve. I'm just gonna cut that off flush. And then we're gonna have the center block. I'm gonna mark out these corners with my little circle marker. So, okay, so let's get those corners rounded off. Okay, I did that, and now you can begin to see how this is all going to go together. That is going to ride there like that. So this whole thing is just designed to hold up the whole main center part of the stand. This assembly is completed, but the next thing is, of course, the gear that meshes to it. I actually feel like when I put it all together, it fits pretty well in there. So I'm going to round over this shape next. So this was just basically just cutting, and I used the disc sander to kind of noodle it, kind of, kind of coax it into fitting. I'm going to use my circle template now to uh, mark out an arch at the top of this little block because I want it rounded over at the top, and I'll just go ahead and cut out the last that little bit up there at the top. And while I'm cutting that, I'm going to cut out the base too, uh, and I'm going to put this upright piece on it. It's the part that holds that gear. And it's important that it's perfectly located because it's got to go round. And uh, if, it's, if it's not centered right, it's going to throw everything off. Just wanted to show you this way of working on a shape like this. This is a rotary burr. Set my drill press up to the highest speed and uh, does a nice job of uh, shaping, especially interior curve stuff like that. So let's get on it and get it done. Got that roughed out nice. Looking good. This burr doesn't leave the greatest finish. It takes out the material pretty fast, but it doesn't leave the greatest finish. So to put a nicer finish on the edge of this base, I put in this much less aggressive, much smoother cutting bit. And that does a nice job of smoothing the thing out. Now that we're almost done with this piece, we can switch to the flap wheel and finish out the edges. Very good. All right, we're ready to go on to the next bit of business. The job at hand is to attach this gear to this base wheel. This is the base that everything's gonna ride on. 
See that hole in there? I'm gonna drill down in there and we're just gonna put a pin in there. And that's gonna mechanically lock the two together. All right, let's see how far I drilled into that. <laughs> Plenty far. All right, let's get this uh, base and gear assembly put together. Basically what I'm just gonna do is to put a lot of five minute epoxy on the shaft. Same thing, I, I just grinded a flat on the drive pin, which we'll put lots of epoxy into, and shove that in there, tap that on in. That should be all the way in. Very good. Clean off the extra epoxy, and then we'll just set the, set the gear on top. Line it up with the pin. See how that's gonna line up? And that pin is gonna drive that base. No problems. All right, onward. While I was gluing the gear assembly, I also glued the upright onto the base, so it's ready to go. The fish is gonna ride on this pole, and to figure out where to locate that pole, I had to determine the center of gravity, which I figured out was right about, roughly about here. But that also means that this fin is in the way. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna trim this fin off. Time to drill the hole for the pole that this thing is going to stand on. We go in there like that. That goes right on in there. And that is a hollow tube, so it's going to fit on a shaft. It's going to swivel like this. Woo! This is the shaft that's going to contain the crank that's going to have this gear attached to it. It's gonna fit and mesh with this gear in there like that. By far the trickiest part of this stand so far has been getting these gears to mesh accurately. So right now they're working just perfectly, but I had to fiddle quite a bit to get it, to get it into position so that the gears meshed really well. Unlike this piece, which I glued on, I don't wanna glue this piece on because if I do, there won't be any way to get in there to service the gear or to change the gear or to do anything like that. So I already drilled two holes and countersunk them. And now the trick I'm going to use here, I'm going to put on just a drop of super glue, literally just a drop like that. And I'm going to put on the upright in the correct position. And I'm going to let that glue, that little tack of glue, hold that piece in place while I drill it. Now that little tack of glue should be enough to just hold it in place, strong enough to get me to, to put in the screws. Now that glue is acting as a third hand to help hold that block on there. It would have been really kind of tricky to do this operation without it. With it, it was a piece of cake. Any luck, they'll go right in. First one's the hard one, because that's the one that's going to apply some torque to the part we want to stay in place. Nice, went right in. Okay, beautiful. Let's go. Woo! -woo! <laughs> Perfect! Wait a minute, wait a minute. Just hold your horses there, boys and girls. Let's really see how this thing flies. Here, let me, let me reposition you. All right, here we go. Proof of concept. Dun da 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 da. <laughs> He's spinning around like a maniac. Now, the fun part will be if he wiggles. Let's see. This was the first mechanism that I designed that was supposed to impart a wiggle to the movement of the fish and uh, it completely failed. It sat on here like this. Yeah, it was, uh, it was nice looking, but it completely failed. And for a variety of reasons, the wiggles were too big, the mechanism that actuated it did not work. Put that aside, maybe that'll come into play for some other thing, who knows. Instead, we're gonna make a much finer geared, much more regular toothed little wheel. And we'll get on that project right now. What I'm designing here is the inner diameter. Okay, looks good. Now I'm gonna draw the ratchet teeth on there and then we're gonna cut them out. I am going to reuse the shape so I can lay that on there 
and use it as a template. It saves me a lot of time, makes my life simple, so at least I get some use out of this first attempt. Something good came out of it, if nothing else. Beautiful. Here, I'm going around drawing in the ratchet teeth. Not really ratchets. It's kind of, it could be a ratchet. It looks like a ratchet, but uh, it's not going to act as a ratchet. It's going to act as a kind of an actuator. Pushing on the fish as it goes around. All right, that looks pretty darn good. Now we're going to cut out the center and the outer thing and hope it works. I'm set up on the drill press and I'm going to cut this hole in the base with a hole saw. <laughs> for really good use for a hole saw, it's cutting a hole. You will notice that I have it well clamped to the uh, drill press and I have the drill press table locked down good and tight, just checking it. Here's a handy tip. In order to set those clamps, I wanted to hold this in place and I'm just, I brought the drill down and, and locked the drill press so that the bit itself held the wood in place while I put the clamps on. That made it a lot easier. Um, the reason I've gone to all the trouble to clamp this up carefully is that uh, one long time ago when I was in college, I managed to uh, cut my thumb in half. I hardly see the scar, but I cut my thumb in half with one of these, and I don't, <laughs> I don't want to repeat that experience. That was not a lot of fun. It can really pull you into the workpiece. You want this locked down. So now that we're locked and loaded and ready to go, I think we can try to cut this out. Came out perfect. And that's going to save me a lot of work, cutting out the teeth. I'm set up on the jigsaw, so let's go ahead and cut these teeth. Beauteous. Take the blade out of the holder, pop this out of there, put the blade back on the arm, and go ahead and retighten it. And that's how jigsaws work. They're pretty handy dandy. Nice. All right. Now we can go ahead and just cut the perimeter. All right, very good. I have the water surface propped up to the correct height. Let's see if we can't make, uh, design and make better looking uprights, pillars to hold the water surface up. I drew some simplified stylized plants, just tacked them on there with the uh, spray contact cement, and we'll cut those out and see how they look. I mixed up a batch of epoxy, the good old five minute. This is where I'm going to apply my favorite technique. I'm going to apply the glue onto the surfaces. So get that co coated in glue and then get each one of these on the correct side, coated in glue. Good bead of glue on there. Like that. And like this. Now, but this is when I'm going to apply my technique. What I'm not going to do is glue those now. I'm going to let those build tack. And you've seen me do this before, but I do this because it's the best way that I know of to uh, not have to clamp things up. Just let the stuff hold itself in place. And while I wait for these to be ready to glue up, I can go ahead and apply these because they don't need any clamp force to stay in place. These are just kind of like surface decorations. Well, let's see if these are going to be ready to go. I think they are. Let's put them on there. Yeah, let's get you so you can see it. Okay. Now let's see if these things are going to hold on there. They should just go on. 
pretty much and just pretty much hold on is the key is the idea you just want them to go on and hold on oh yeah they are grabbing yeah they just they just kind of snap on there and stick hard good just the way we want them to do it while the base parts are curing up i want to go ahead and make this fin the fin is going to be the thing that actuates the wobble. All right, I <clears throat> got the, uh, the magic sculpt parts cut out, and then I'm going to be able to glue that in there. To glue in the fins, I'm going to mix my epoxy with the uh, magic sculpt powder to give this some more viscosity. You want to mix the A B components together before you add in, add in whatever powders or pigments or anything else. Good idea to mix this stuff first. That way you know it's thoroughly mixed. And then add in a nice wad of powder. You notice I didn't measure that. I just eyeballed it. And um, we'll see how it turns out. All right, let's see what happens when we jam this in there. Kind of like that. And... And the other one in, kind of like that. Each one of these little plant stands is going to have a hole, which is going to allow it to be bolted. I'm going to use a little machine screw to bolt it to the base. All right, got the holes in there. Now we can sculpt out these little bases, cut these apart and sculpt them out. Beautiful. I'm gonna finish this fin with some magic sculpt. Just kind of incorporate the rod into the fin so that it all sort of disappears. Same thing on the other side. Just cover that rod very nicely. and get it shaped up and finished out. That's all there is to it. And when that fin dries, I'll go ahead and sand it smooth, straighten all the edges, sand it smooth, and it'll be ready to go. I whittled these bases down on the bandsaw just to make it faster here at the wheel. And now I'm gonna grind, use the big wheel to grind them to their final shape. It may be surprising that you can use such so massive a wheel for such a delicate job, but you can. Now you may be wondering why I worked so close to the center of the wheel. Maybe it would have been safer to work out toward the edges. But the reason is, is because in the center of the wheel, the, the paper is traveling a much smaller distance than it is out of the circumference. And so it's a much less aggressive cut. It's a much gentler cut in the center of the wheel. So I take advantage of that and uh, it's a little bit Gotta watch your fingers, but uh, it does make a, a gentler, less aggressive cut. I'm gonna mark out the locations where these uprights, these plants, are gonna stand. And in order to do that, easiest, I'm gonna use my handy dandy reach in pencil. It's just a sharpened pencil, but it allows me to reach down into the hole and make a mark. And it's a small mark, but I see where it is. So, right there is one hole. Nice. Once again, my whole reach-in pencil <laughs> has done its job. Very handy little trick. Got to have one of these around. Now that we've marked out those holes, let's drill them. Because of all this stuff that's on the base, I can't, uh, I can't put the thing down, so I'm just gonna have to hang it, hang it over the table to cut the countersinks. Perfect. Same thing on all four corners. Just eyeball it in. Cutting really slow so that it makes a clean bevel. Nice, now we got four nice bevels 
for the flathead screws, same as I did uh, with these uprights here. So now all the base parts will be nice and flat on the bottom. Beautiful. I'm installing the uprights, these plant uprights that are gonna hold up the water. And uh, I got the first one installed, which is just a, a little machine screw and a nut and washer. And in installing that first one, I quickly discovered that <laughs> it was just about impossible to do. So the new plan is I'm going to assemble them as I have done here, like this, and then just uh, goober them up, just the washer and just the nut with epoxy so that they become bonded to the stand itself. And then all I gotta do is locate the screw from the bottom and put them in there and the washer and the nut are held in place and that's gonna make life 80 million times easier. All right, we've got our epoxy. We really, really don't wanna, <laughs> we don't want to get epoxy on the threads of that screw, because if I do, I have made myself very sad and very, very miserable. So I'm going to be super careful to not get any epoxy on those threads. Just encapsulate the nut and washer so that they can't go anywhere. Well, I wasn't sure how they were going to go, but I have to say, my little stanchions, look at that, they just glued in there perfectly. This thing will get reinforced later, but for right now, it's glued on pretty well, and it is working like a champ. So there's only a couple pieces left to make, and one is going to be a top piece of water, and we're going to make that right now. I want to make a piece that covers up this gear. I don't like the look of that gear. I just want to make a rubbing, which will tell me where those gear teeth are relative to the fish. All right, that pretty much tells me where the gear is and where the fish slot is, because he has to swivel like that. So now I can use this rubbing to make a drawing of the water that I want to make. And it'll come in like this. I want to, just want it to cover. Now keep in mind, this water is going to rotate with the fish. It's also going to be the carrier for any other pieces that I add to this. So it's going to go around. Whee! Okay, <laughs> all right, let's transfer this to some wood and get it cut out. It took me a while to fiddle this, uh, this piece into shape, but here's the whole secret to the deal. It's this little spring that I pilfered out of a ballpoint pen. That's the thing that causes the fish fin to ride against the cog and causes the fish to kind of wiggle in a kind of a clickety-clackety sort of way. So now what we need to do is to glue this piece into place. The spring is just floating in there. It's not glued in. It'll just be retained in by the hole that it's riding in. I cut this piece out on the jigsaw and it is gonna sit on top of here like that. And you can see how that spring actuates the fish. Now I have to say right now, his movement is pretty wobbly, but I think I'll be able to smooth that out with a little bit of effort. Anyway, this is gonna sit on there like that, and other things are gonna be put on this base. So um, we'll look forward to that. Thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you liked it. And uh, <laughs> next week, we're gonna add a lot more stuff to this thing. So I hope you come back for that. See you in the next one. Let's see what I got. What it is, ba? La di di da.